Okay, good morning, everyone. <laughs> we can get started. Welcome to Creative Mornings Mafqat. Uh, welcome to our local community members who have attended with us so many, so many months. And I see a lot of new names and new faces today. So welcome, you are now part of the Creative Mornings Mafqat community. It is so nice to have you here. Before we get started, um, I just want to say that we encourage participation throughout the entire session. If you want to, there's so many ways you could interact with us. The first thing you could do is turn on your camera so you, we can see your beautiful morning faces. It's okay, we don't judge here. Uh, if you could just take this chance, if you want to open your camera, it's completely optional, but it's nice to see who's out there. It's nice to see your facial reactions. It's nice to feel the energy in this beautiful morning. The second way you can interact is through the chat. If you have any questions, any comments, any additions you want to say, we are following the chat and we will be there uh, and answering any questions you might have in the chat. And obviously in the end, we will have a Q&A. The third way you can interact is by clicking the raise hand button, which should be in the participants uh, section. If you want to speak up using your microphone, uh, if you want to ask a specific question, just click on the raise hand and we will call on you at the appropriate time. So uh, we look forward to spending the next hour or so with you. And I hope you are just as excited as I am for today's event. Um, before we get started, we always like to start with a little icebreaker. This is a new one for those who've attended Creative Mornings before. This is a completely new icebreaker. And since we're called Creative Mornings Muscat, I want to test all of you, all of you uh, in your knowledge of areas in Muscat. So this is how the icebreaker is going to go. I'm going to show you a picture. And you, whether in the chat or if, you're, if your camera is on, you can uh, lip sync it. <laughs> uh, but most likely in the chat, you have to guess where this picture was taken. So when I talk about places, I'm talking about neighborhoods in Muscat. So it could be Rui, Darsayt, Matrah, Qurum, Khwer, Boshar, Ghala, Ghubra, Adeba, and so on, Sib, Khob and so on. You all know Masqat very well. So let's get started. We're going to go through a few pictures and let's see if you all know where these pictures were taken. And I just want to thank um, our previous Creative Mornings uh, team member. His name is Leit Khalifa, who so graciously helped me find these pictures. And also he took some of the pictures himself. So thank you, Leit, for sharing your art with us. OK, first picture. This is easy. We're starting with the easy ones. Qarom, obviously. <laughs> yes, so this is really good. Uh, this is really easy. This is an old picture, but um, OK, next. This is a bit more difficult <clears throat> if you didn't work in the area. Yes, Ahmed got it. It's Rui. Well done. Yes, it's Rui. Eunice knows all of the places so far. <laughs> this is a more recent picture, and Leith, uh, our, our previous team member, took this picture. Yes, Maria, you're right. This is Sib. Uh, this is the mosque in Sib. It's in Sib, yes. This is a bit more difficult. It's an obscure. Uh, place, but if you've been here, just try to tap into your old memories and you'll remember where you've seen this before. No, it's not Qurum Park. It's somewhere with a lot of trees, yes, but it's not a park. Oh, I'm surprised. Not, no one knows this. It's difficult. There's not a lot of details. Yes, Majan got it. Al Jam Al Akbar. This is in Ghubra. This is in the Grand Mosque. This should be easy. I 
kind of. It's Khwer, yes, Isa, you're right. It's Khwer 33. This is very easy. Everyone knows where this is. This has to be. No, it's not Ghubra. Well, it's not really Ghubra. It's kind not not Boshar, no. It's Ghala, Yunus got it. It's um, after the um, a Royal Hospital, it's the traffic lights after the Royal Hospital. Okay, I think we just have a few left. This, this I couldn't guess, honestly, when Nate sent me this picture, I, I didn't know where this is. So if uh, any of you really knows their city or Musqat very well, Matrah, yes, Ahmed is correct, this is in Matrah. I don't even know where this is exactly, but I kind of want to go find it now. Matrah, okay, I think we just have one left. The most difficult one of all, or the easiest, depends on who you are. No, it's not Madeira. No, it's not Wataya. Not an Ansab. Close. It's not Seeb. No. It's right before you go, you take that route to Amrat. No, it's not Ruri. It's somewhere. Yes, you're right, Ahmed. It's somewhere. Somewhere in Masqat, yeah. Uh, it's not Wadi Aday. Isa, you are the winner. It's indeed Sha'biyat Boshar. Um, well done, Isa. You got it right. <laughs> I know you guys are just trying to guess, but it's, it's good that some of you actually know uh, these places in Masqat. Join us next month. We'll do some more pictures, inshallah. And if you have any of your own pictures that you want to share and we can guess it on our event, we can do that next week for sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for participating and playing along. Um, we can't start a creative morning session without thanking our global partners. We have three global partners. Our first global partner is Basecamp, which is an online tool for project management. And they recently launched a new email platform called Hey. Uh, creative Mornings is collaborating with Hey on a, let's say, virtual water cooler initiative for our, our global community. So every two weeks, HQ will be sending a question and you can answer that question using the Hey email platform, and they will make sure to reply to everyone who answers the question. Um, so uh, you can check the link in the chat for more information about this initiative, and you can play along. It's every two weeks, and it should be really fun. Our second global partner for marketing is MailChimp. MailChimp has supported uh, Creative Mornings for over 11 years, so we're very grateful for them. And they've recently launched their annual report for 2020. There's a lot of fun facts and weird, quirky things that have happened in 2020 for MailChimp. For example, uh, MailChimp have been able to create stats by seeing how many hours people have spent on Zoom. Uh, and it's 400,000 hours. I don't know if it's total. I don't know if it's just MailChimp users. But there's a lot of cool information in the annual reports. You can check it out as well as a time capsule for 2020. Um, and we'll put the link uh, in the chat as well. Our third and final global sponsor is Skillshare. If people don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community and um, it helps people uh, improve their creativity in whatever skill they wanna pursue online. Um, and this month, because it's Black History Month, they're releasing an, an email series where they give you a prompt every Monday, a creative prompt that you can choose to explore your creativity in. And we'll also put the link if you want to join uh, the email series as well. Uh, it's called My Creative Roots, and they send one email a week uh, in the next or throughout this month. We have to read our virtual manifesto. So what is Creative Morning's virtual manifesto? It's basically the set of objectives, of goals, of things we believe in as Creative Mornings. And for us to do this, I would like to ask for um, someone to volunteer 
and read the Creative Mornings Manifesto. Obviously, um, uh, I'm going to put the text up for you so you can think about it. If you would like to read the manifesto, uh, please uh, raise your hand. I will put the text up for you so you can just skim through it before you volunteer to read it. So um, any takers for reading the manifesto? The text is right there in front of you. Uh, if you want to volunteer, go to participants and click on raise hand. I'm going to wait until someone does it because I won't be reading it. So it's OK. Take your time. Think about it. We're in no rush at all. Ahmed? All right. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning to all of us. It's been a pleasure to be on board uh, with you. Inshallah, continuously will be as part. We have the real time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for volunteering. Thank you thank for volunteering. Wa shukr mawsool lil ustad al muhandis and ashi al qarusi. Ala hada. Everyone is everyone is creative. A creative life, uh, bravery and action, honesty, hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connection, in learning for others, in jazz hands, virtual clubs, and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and aspire change in neighborhood and cities around the world. Thank you. Everyone is welcome. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for being brave enough to share your voice with us today. And I hope we can hear more people's voices as well. Um, uh, Thank you. So basically, that's it. That's what we believe in. And we hope that you feel the same way uh, towards the end of the session. Our topic for this month, it's what you're all here for and what you've all been waiting for. So February's theme is divergent. Technologist, author, and designer John Maida explains, a divergent thinker takes an idea and expands it. They look for new ways to connect with other diverse things. I'm in favor of a synthesis to connect the convergent and divergent. As creators, builders, and thinkers, how can we get better at solving complex problems? A promising starting point is for us to be in the same spaces with those we've traditionally deemed different. Moments of divergence can create beautiful futures when we are willing to leave space for change. Take a step back to reflect on what winds of change you want to welcome into your life today. And with that brings me to our amazing, incredible speaker of the month. There is no words that I can do, I can say that will give justice to our speaker. Um, she has had a long career, a long journey, and with many, many different divergences. I can even go as far to say that without her efforts and without the work that she has done, we may not be here on Zoom today. So without further, further ado, I want to give the chance and please give a round of applause with me in your <laughs> muted states to our speaker, uh, uh, engineer, honorable engineer, Nashia Al Kharosi. We'll just uh, ask you to unmute your, uh, unmute your, uh, device so we can hear you and then I will pass on the floor to you. If you would all like to pin her video, you can click on the three dots next to her video and click on pin video so you can see her clearly throughout the session. Uh, Tfadvali, uh, uh, engineer. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Um, alaikum. Alaikum. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to meet you young people today. Um, I'm, a I'm a grandmother to all of you, maybe. Anyway, uh, to start with, I will start about my story. 
and how life is all teach you all the time to diverge from what you are to gain more knowledge and ability to make things happen. Uh, for me, if I start uh, maybe at my youth time, when uh, I finished school, I went to school in Cairo and I finished school in Thanawiya in Cairo. At our time, it was difficult uh, that we do not have a directive in the school uh, what you should sp specialize in. Uh, but at th that time, Egypt in particular, uh, the popular subjects was medicine and engineering. Engineering, it was a new subject in particular for females. So even for men also, they wanted to become also engineers, uh, but for other reasons they have there because they wanted to immigrate. Most of my classmates, they wanted to immigrate abroad. I don't know why. You may be to look for better opportunities to go to the West or to go to Australia. Anyway, I decided from beginning, I wanted to do engineering, but I wanted something else in engineering. I was good at art and I wanted to be an architect more than to be a telecom. Unfortunately, when I applied for, for admission, we have to put our choices. I put my choices, engineering, 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 then the last medicine. I didn't want to go to medicine. Uh, I don't have the heart of being a doctor to see sick people. Uh, anyway, um, I ended up ex being accepted uh, in my first choice, which was engineering. But then when uh, I went to college, I found out that in order to be an architect, I need to apply as an architect, not as engineering, a general one. And to do that, you need to have a portfolio of your creativity designs and to submit it and be interviewed. So it was too late for me. I could not enter into architecture. So I ended up in general engineering the first year. Uh, and then uh, uh, afterwards we had to specialize. So anyway, I was good in mathematics, very good in mathematics and physics from before, from school. And that is the reason what made me uh, direct to, the, to engineering. But then when my parents, especially my father found out, he told me, he wrote to me, he was not with, with me. He said, you are going to engineering. Where are you going to find a job? Not in Arabia, not in the West. That time, even the West didn't have female engineers, okay? And we were immigrants at that time. We left, my, 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 it was a, a time revolution in Zanzibar and we don't know where we are going to end up with. I was studying in Egypt. My sister was in UK. My brother was in UK. We were all uh, still uh, studying at that time. And my father was left in Zanzibar. My mother had to migrate and escape from Zanzibar with my two younger siblings. Uh, they came to Cairo to join me. So anyway, my father, when he says, he said, look, it's better for you, you study, go to, uh, first of all, he said, why don't you go to medicine? I said, I don't want because you discourage us not to be doctors. My father didn't want his daughters to be doctors at all. He was a doctor himself, but he didn't want us to be doctors. So I said, no, I don't want uh, medicine. Uh, I could have got transferred to med medical school. So he said, okay, you are good at maths, then take mathematics. Go to College of Science and take major in mathematics. And then I promise you, I will let you go up to PhD and then become an academia. So I thought of it. I said, okay, I'll go for math. And I, it's true. And I started the process of uh, requesting transfer to uh, science, called the College of Science. But I had a problem at that time because somebody has to come out of the College of Science and have got grades that being accepted in engineering, which is higher, higher grades. So 
that particular year, I couldn't get anyone, you know, to get a replacement of me to exchanging our seats from College of Science to Engineering. But I was attending uh, uh, College of Science. I started to attend there. But then they promised me, they told me next year, we will do our best to transfer you from beginning to College of Science. So I went back to College of Engineering. I had a friend, an Egyptian friend, a girl with me. She was in school with me. She told me, look, Nasha, you are not going to lose anything. You just let us finish this semester. You passed, you passed, you didn't pass. You will go back to science because it was too late for me. In the middle of the year, I went back to engineering. Anyway, she's a friend, she supported me. So anyway, I passed that year. I had to leave two uh, subjects because those were drawings and I didn't practice in it. It was uh, descriptive geometry and uh, uh, Warsha, Warash, uh, uh, an another, another subject, okay? Anyway, and I did it, I took it with me to the second year and uh, I did them there. Uh, so I went back to engineering. Now, when uh, in uh, at the third year, in the third year, because it's total is 50, five years, in the third year, we have to decide to go to which one, either to go mechanical or electrical or something. Oh, uh, we had civil engineering, the civil engineering also, it was there. So I decided to go to, to take uh, electrical engineering because I found out that in electrical engineering, uh, there's a telecom and telecom is mainly mathematics, more maths than anything else, okay? Not like mechanical, more maths when you go into that area. So I took uh, then uh, again, after electrical engineering, I studied electrical engineering. Then the fourth year, you have to specialize. I specialize in telecom and I graduated in telecom. Now, where to go to find a job? It was already Oman open up, but uh, in Oman, I thought I will never get a job. Me as a woman, I will not be accepted to work as an engineer in Oman. So anyway, when I came back here, uh, the first thing before coming here was transit in Dubai. So I went to Dubai, there was Kevin Wireless and Kevin Wireless also was operating in Oman. And I went to see them. They said, okay, we'll interview. Either you work in Dubai or you go back to, or you go to Muscat. They interviewed me, but uh, the way they interviewed, I found it, it's very, very low, very low to tell you frankly, like a school girl, Thanawiya, mathematics of uh, school, not mathematics which an advanced one, which is, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, stupid little uh, questions for a school girl, not for a, an engineer. Okay, anyway, then I came to Oman again, I went to Kiblen Wireless, I went to PDO. Now, PDO, they interviewed me for two days, committee after committee, committee after committee. Then they told me, uh, we have to go back to Holland uh, to get approval for your appointment because that time they had women, female, but they were juniors. And I will be, you know, they had junior staff and uh, senior staff. In the senior staff, they didn't have female at all. Okay, said so because we have to take approval from uh, the headquarters in Holland. So why, it's just accidentally, I met one of my cousin and he said, ah, government needs all graduates to join. Why don't you try uh, go to government and uh, meet them, see if they can accept you. So I went to PTT, that is telecom that time, I went to PTT, I met the director. The director immediately told me, you can join, you can join tomorrow, but we will appoint you next month because the process of appointment takes time, but we'll not pay you anything. I said, it's okay, I will work. 
free. <laughs> and I worked free until, uh, you know, the process of my papers and the uh, appointment. Now, when I started work, I was lost. This is where, you know, you are a fresh graduate being handed over a section. I was the head of that section. No one to help me. Only files are there. Because there was somebody, it seems, before I joined, used to come as a part-timer, some engineer, I'm not a manager, but he was working somewhere else. So he used to come as a part-timer. So the files were there and I started to go through the files to find out what is going on. Okay, and at that time, PTT was responsible of international relations. We have become newly member with UN. In 1972, and a new member in ITU, International Telecommunication Union. So I have to look after that. And at the same time, there was a big project coming up, which is the first uh, infrastructure uh, for telecom in Oman. So, the, and that was under supervision of the ministry because that is government project, uh, the head consultant. Then, after two weeks, a truck sent to the, my off my where I'm working my office full of documents. It was proposals for a tender, and the minister ordered that I should analyze that and submit a report within two weeks. <laughs> proposals of different companies. That is, you know, in in university you don't study that. I expected I'll be working on equipment, not, not in that at all, in this area at all. But the director was nice to me. He said, "Look, do whatever you can do. I will type for you because I could not also type that time. We didn't have computers, well, laptops or anything, and I couldn't type. I will let you prepare the report, and I will type it for you myself personally and." we will forward it to the minister. The minister was testing me. Actually, I found out that he was testing me. Will I refuse? Because, you know, still people didn't believe that a woman can be an engineer. <laughs> anyway, I made the report and I submitted it and it was fine. Of course, uh, they understand that because uh, it was uh, many, uh, uh, several, several uh, proposals. Plus there was a report by a consultant also, so it helped, you know, to give me myself a view what it could be done, and I submitted it, and it was fine. Then um, the government of Oman uh, requested uh, assistance from uh, UNDP to provide expertise uh, to Oman to define the needs of Oman in telecom expertise. So there was an advisor who, was, who came uh, from UN and uh, I was with him. I was uh, assigned to him and he, he made a proposal, very important proposal, how I should be trained because that was fresh. And he wrote a long, uh, a long uh, report about me. I was alone. There were no other engineers yet have arrived. And, uh, and the needs of Oman, how many experts are needed, blah, blah. And, and thereafter, I was sent uh, from this report, I was sent to Europe, to five countries on job training for six months. So I was moving from one country to the other on telecom and see the work, what they're doing, so that when I come back home, I adopt those methodologies of work and how things are being managed in that way. Uh, it was a, it was it, what they call it's a fellowship, but it's six month fellowship and it's provided to uh, developing countries by uh, International Telecommunication Union. Uh, while I was, uh, I was uh, on the training at the end of the training, I received a call from Muscat. You have to attend and uh, chair a conference, a, a, a general assembly of a study group 
which is CCITT, it was called, it's a standardization group for uh, telecom. It, it was an order from the minister. So I attended that meeting also. But you learn, you know, from, from all these, you start learning, you start learning how things are being done. Okay, it's not just, uh, I was not afraid. I was, I was actually excited to learn more and to meet others. But I was the youngest, always I was the youngest among all delegations. And there were no women at all. <sighs> then after that, uh, I came back home. Uh, I started to work on the project uh, of uh, the infrastructure. We got uh, experts from abroad. These experts were supposed to be to be to to each one of them be allocated a counterpart, an Omani counterpart who will take over because they're coming only uh, on a mission of two years. After two years, they go and the Omani uh, counterpart takes over from them, and they have to report on a monthly basis what did they transfer the knowledge to the Omani. They have to report it not in Oman. They have to report it back to uh, to uh, International Telecommunication Union. So I was uh, allocated as a counterpart of the head of all of them. He was not good with me, this man. He was acting, uh, I think he was an Arab, I can say, but I think he had that uh, complex of a woman. I felt it was like that because uh, he was uh, favoring somebody who is not qualified at all. Okay, all the time and started, you know, to make this fitna. So I decided to move out because before that, I went to the mid, uh, to the uh, undersecretary and I told him, look, it is happening. This is making me very, very uh, unhappy with my work. He, he's he's like a rejection, you know. He fighting against me. Ah, the it's better that I go to another ministry. That time, the Ministry of uh, Information, they have launched television. And I wanted to work for television, engineering, not uh, as an announcer. So I, I requested transfer and I was transferred. I went to, I was transferred to Ministry of Information. Unfortunately, I did not know that Ministry of Information on the engineering side, on television, they had subcontract the maintenance and operation to a foreign company, it was a German company, and I'm working in the ministry, ministry, so they could not give me any work. I stayed there for three months. I found myself, I have no work. I started to complain. I said, I can't, this is my career. It's the beginning of my career. I cannot continue like this. And I tried to explain to the, to the you know, to the, my, my superiors, but nothing, every time they said, sorry, sorry. But, and I knew that there's a contract. So it will never finish that contract, uh, maybe two years or three years, it'll be freezing, frozen there. So I decided to go and apply for again in PDO because I got a job in PDO before. I, so I decided to go back and request for another PDO. I got an offer before and I got an offer again. And also, I decided to go to the company who was uh, executing the contractor, you can say, the contractor who was executing the uh, telecommunication uh, infrastructure, the first one, national uh, one. When I went there, he told me, the manager, we will take you, but on condition, you get us a no objection from my previous minister, because you are working on the other side. Now you'll be working on this side, you know, the opposite side. If he agrees, we are going to take you. And they gave me a good offer. So straight away, I went to the minister, my ex-minister, and uh, I said, I came here to ask for your no objection. I said, but you are a minister of information. I said, yes, but there's no work there for me. I went there, but it seems there's no work for me. He said, we need you back. I said, uh, ha, 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 ha. you need me back. Are you going to promote me? Because I got an offer, a very attractive offer, nothing which, with, with, and it was a private sector, nothing compared to the government uh, position. 
uh, offer? He said, yes. I said, okay, I said, tomorrow you come back and I'll speak to Minister of Information to transfer your papers back to us uh, again. So I went the second day, they told me to sign, to take over. I said, before I take over, I want to see my promotion first. And it was very difficult to get a promotion at that time when you transfer, you know, it's uh, it, until today, it's, it's not allowed when you transfer to, from one ministry to another ministry, you cannot get a, a promotion to attract you not to come. But because maybe I was in that ministry before, and then I went to another ministry that for a very short period of time, and then I came back. So anyway, they brought the promotion, then I signed the paper and I started to work. And I worked there for, uh, from 19, uh, uh, I mean, I started 72 uh, up to, uh, 75 when Omantel started to be established. And we were, at that time, there were some other engineers, Omani male engineers. They were much older than me. They came from abroad. Uh, they joined PTT and uh, uh, four of us, there was a decision by the minister to be transferred to Omantel, each one a counterpart of certain uh, position within Omantel. I was a counterpart of a general manager who is the CEO. There was no CEO at that time. There was a general manager, an American guy, and uh, there were some British uh, and some Americans because the Omantel itself was a management company which was a shareholding company between the government of Oman and Keblen Wireless again. But the assets were all owned by government of Oman. When I went there, I went to the general manager. I said, look, I want to see my job description. First thing, I, the pay is good. <laughs> the pay is much higher than the government. But I said, I want to see my job description first. So. I found my job description as assistant to him. I wrote him, I said, I'm not an assistant. I came a counterpart and a counterpart because I worked before as a counterpart to an expert, international expert. I sit with you in the same office, my table beside you, you take decision, but after discussing with me to explain that decision, how it is taken. He said, no way. I said, okay, I wrote him a letter and a copy to the minister. Uh, a call came and say, and uh, from the minister said, go back to where you are in the government, you know, in the in PTT. So I went back, I think it was two, three, four days, a royal decree was issued. I was appointed as board member of Omantel, the new formed company. I was very young. I was only 26 years old. So it's not something that uh, it is strange to get a young person to be on a board, okay. Um, of course, after a while, the minister realized about those experts, some of them, in particular that one, he was terminated. <laughs> the one who's, who wanted me to be an assistant. Unfortunately, the boys who were working with me who, are, who went there, they accepted to be assistant to those managers. They were allocated to the managers. They accepted to be assistant to those managers. I'm the only one who did not accept, okay? And that's how it happened. Uh, so I worked there, of course, I went to, uh, I was uh, also mandated to be a mem uh, a, a representative of Oman in the first uh, uh, coordination committee on uh, frequency spectrum of radio spectrum of the Gulf. Actually, it is the first Gulf cooperation uh, countries uh, secretariat, uh, even 
Saudi Arabia was not a member and Kuwait was not a member, but it is existing till today and it is called Technical Secretariat of GCC. And I was, uh, I was the main representative of uh, Oman there to establish that to, from, it, from its establishment. Um, and in 1973, I think 72, 1970, or 73, there was a plenipotentiary conference in Malaga, in Spain. I was among in the delegation of uh, Oman delegation. It was uh, led by the minister himself, but the minister did not stay, only stayed for two days, and then he had to come back to Oman. So I was left with the other delegates from Oman, uh, but I was not the head of the delegation. Then I, I noticed something very important there. You learn a lot of things which you didn't learn them before. I noticed that uh, countries who are new, you know, that time they are getting their independence and they are becoming member of the United Nations. I noticed each country was representing, introducing themselves, who are they? Because nobody knew Oman. They wouldn't, yeah, I mean, we put our plaque there as Oman, but they don't know Oman. So I told my my. Uh, that the chairperson who was left behind us, I told him, Ishra Ayak, I think it is time that we have to introduce ourselves. Who are we as Oman? And by the way, in that conference, there were about 600 delegates, only one woman, an engineer from France. She was an elderly woman, the only woman beside me, the youngest within those 600 delegates. So, but people don't, they don't know us. So I, he said, what to do? And it was uh, the language to be used was English. And by the way, I come from Arabic school. I never went to an English school at all. So my, my, my English was just, uh, I learned it from reading and I used to read a lot different, on different issues. So since as a child, I read a lot. And I read in particular in English to learn more of English. Then he said, well, what you will do? I said, I'll write you a speech. <laughs> I have never wrote, written in my life a speech. So I wrote a speech of introductory of our man. I told him, can you read it? I had another delegate with us. He was uh, uh, his highness, but he said, look, me, I'm not going to do it because I am here only to assist you from foreign affairs. I'm a diplomat. <laughs> okay, I told my, uh, my boss, he was my boss. I told him, can you read it? It's English. There's no Arabic here. He said, I'll try. I told him, please read. I want to listen to you <laughs> to that extent. I want to listen. I found him. He could not, you know, he could not read it properly. He was an elderly man. So last minute, I told him, give me the paper. I will give the speech. And I gave the speech myself. From that day, ITU, they knew me because they came to congratulate us. This young woman, she was able to face all these delegates and introduce her country. Who is this? And who is, who, from which country these they are? Anyway, Alhamdulillah, it was a very successful, and they, they always remember, used to remember me how, how I was, I had guts to come up on the podium and talk and, and uh, give it that, that speech. Then that was uh, an issue. Then, to tell you frankly, when I'm as an engineer, I expected that I will work with on equipment, not to work on paperwork. But I ended up working on paperwork because equipment or maintenance and this technician can do it. Okay. But you know, you have as a young person, you have that idea. I want to work on with my hands. And I used to like to work with my hands. But you learn other things with it. Uh, of course, I learned a lot because uh, there are many, many. Uh, many, many of the work which I was doing, we didn't study it in school at all, zero. We didn't study in school. Um, then, 
of course, uh, after that, uh, I decided I wanted to go for postgraduate studies. I saw that, uh, what I, I noticed that we had consultants, they used to tell us things and, you know, in order to debate with them, you need to have that very vast knowledge, otherwise they can make you lose your way. So I said, let, let me go to UK, do my postgraduate masters and come back with a more knowledge. I went to the minister and asked him to uh, recommend me for postgraduate. He told me, no, 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 we need you here. We are not going to have university for the next 30 years. You want to be in academia? We don't need, we need, we are enough with our uh, bachelors. So what to do? I applied myself slowly to university. I got accepted. Then uh, I said, okay, let me go to the British Council. I had their scholarships there in British Council. They used to give scholarship directly, not through Ministry of Higher Education. I went there, they gave me a scholarship. Now, how to leave? I wrote, I said, look, I'm going to join the father of my children. He was deputed abroad, so I'm taking leave without pay. I left and from there I went to do my masters. Of course, you know, British Council, they were giving very small stipend of uh, scholarship. Very, very small for, I mean, I was paying, I remember they were giving 150 pounds a month. 150 pounds was the rental itself of my accommodation and it was in a village. So really I had to, to, to spend from my own savings. To, I took my little daughter, she was uh, just uh, born and I took her with me, with a maid of course. And I worked very hard. I went in October, I graduated in July. So less than 10 months, it's almost 10 months. And I knew that I didn't have to take, I don't have to take thesis because thesis will take a longer time. So I preferred to be to sit for exams because there is a program. Either you sit for the exams, but there is no fail. You have to pass certain grade to graduate. Otherwise they don't allow you at all to repeat in UK in any university. It's, it's only one time chance. But Alhamdulillah, I, I went through and I passed and graduated. Then I had, I was still on leave. I got my second baby, still at home. Then we decide, uh, it was decided that their father is re being returned to Muscat. So in 1979, I returned with two children, with two babies, never taken a leave <laughs> of maternity leave, nothing like that, all at my own account. I came back with my masters and two babies and I went back to my work and they offered me again, uh, they told me, we're going to make you director general. Listen to this, it's very important. I said, director general, for what? He said, for telecom. I said, telecom is not in the ministry. Telecom is in Omantel. In the ministry, we have only international relations and uh, uh, frequency management spectrum. That's all. How do you open, how, I mean, for me, I felt why wasting money to have a, a, a director general for, for an area and a field which is very narrow, it requires only a manager to manage it. I said, so what to do with you? I said, I don't know, I don't care uh, position, which is true. I never cared for positions, you know, these big positions, I want leadership, I want, no. I care what you appreciate me and compensate me. That's all, I don't care for names of positions. So I was appointed as a advisor to the minister's office. Of course, the advisors, it, mean, uh, it means that uh, policies, everything to do with policies in telecom. And at the same time, because I was still a board member in the new, Omantel was first, and then it was uh, transformed to uh, an authority. So in authority also, I was appointed again as a board member in uh, that authority. 
and this is how uh, uh, yeah how you keep on diverging all the time and we and gaining some knowledge from here and here and of course i was working very closely with the with the staff of omantel because uh, there was a problem there they had a technical committee and a tariff committee that uh, it didn't function well within the executives of the omantel so it was mandated to me to head those two committees i said this is not normal i am a board member policy issues on top how can i go and do an executive work and by the way i'm not paid by them i was not being paid single beza from omantel for the work what i was doing so but I, I, they said okay temporary let it go on and then you will leave it once it is being managed well then we can we can leave but it ended up i stayed there till the end of my career in the ministry there was a time when uh, we started restructure of the sector because again i was in the executive committee of uh, ministerial committee for restructure of the sector in preparation for privatization and a new law and of course i was the main person there to do all this you know to 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 deal with the consultants different consultants different and in different issues to do with the law to do with the costing to the financial of omantel to the you know to for valuation of omantel itself and the transformation of omantel from authority to omantel then in 2002 uh, i i was uh, uh, seconded i saw a decision coming out secondment of me to go to establish telecommunication regulatory body i went to the minister i told him your excellency if i go with this decision i can't come back to my position in the ministry because this is it's a secondment and a secondment be careful young people read the laws carefully i was continuously updating myself with the prevailing laws in the country if you go on second on on uh, on uh, secondment it means that i have to agree with the body who would which, which i will work for my contract and there was no body the body is we are going to set it up so i said maybe i would not like their offer if you send me there the law says you are not allowed to work the new law which was issued to work in the telecom sector for 2 years would be bad if you go to telecommunication regulatory authority he said now what to do because we find you that you are the most suitable person to go there and set it up of course i lived with many ministers not one minister one minister was advisor but one minister then the ministers are changing in the period of which i was working a lot of them a lot of changes a lot of new ministers have uh, were appointed and replaced this by this then i thought about it for one day and i went second day i said look the best thing maliko in kilni transfer me to another ministry i don't know which ministry and from there send me on deputation because i can always go back to the government on deputation but not secondment he said it can be done i said yes please you can uh, ask uh, other ministers if they agree because there was a committee who is doing that anyway they agreed in ministry of uh, uh, khidma al madaniya they had agreed okay that i will be transferred to another ministry and from that ministry which they i never knew them who are them <laughs> i never met them i never reported to them because i reported straight away to the not report i was myself reporting myself in the new tra that i took with me uh two 
two or three staff, I don't remember, I think two, two, two staff from Omantel, two with me, to whom I know that they can uh, help me, you know, to, uh, one, they, they were not engineers, by the way, but they can, they, administratively, they can uh, support me. So I moved there uh, on full-time basis with the other two members who are part-timers. They come twice a week with the chairman. Uh, the chairman was the minister himself. It was in transitional committee till they appoint uh, members or commissioners of the, of the authority. And of course, uh, I worked, I was transferred in 2002. So I, I left Oman till that time in 2002. And I was in a regulatory body and we set it up. It's not easy because you set something from scratch. Beside, it is a completely different, different approach of managerial and uh, depth of knowledge in both technical and legal. So these two both have to go together in order to be a regulator. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, it was not an easy job to open a market. You have an incumbent who is very strong, playing games here and there, okay? They didn't want competition. And, uh, but I, I had to be very firm. I, I learned how to be firm with our decision-making and transparency. Very, very important transparency, clear message to the market, clear message to the public, okay? Uh, nothing was hidden, nothing. Uh, well, alhamdulillah, I, then I was appointed in 2007. Uh, that I have to take my early retirement because you are not allowed to be to be a government officer and to be a commissioner or although we call them member, but is a commissioner because you have full authority to run the the TRA. So I had to uh, to take early retirement and appointed uh, there till 2011. Alhamdulillah, we opened the market. At least the first step of opening the market is to introduce the Orido today, what you see, because they were not there. So it was open and uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of <laughs> challenges in, in that, a uh, lot of uh, convincing and debating. Alhamdulillah, it was good. I think uh, then, of course, I was surprised because in uh, 2011, myself, I said, look, the market now has opened, but not enough. You have two now big, uh, you, you know, one is an incumbent and the other one was taking a very big part of the market. So the competition is not head to head as such. So it was a time we, I was expecting that uh, we will open for a third operator in 2009. Till today, we know only recently a third operator. We, but we in TRA, we wanted that. So I said, I have done what I could do. So it's better now for me to leave because you, you cannot improve anymore. If there's no third operator coming into it, it's impossible. It's very tough to regulate these two, okay? And, uh, you know, you will not feel those advantages that we are expecting a third party will, a third company operator will break in and these will start moving. So I, I, I submitted my resignation uh, before that. Then uh, of course my resignation has to be addressed only to his majesty because I was appointed by, uh, by a decree. Then, They've changed the law. They made it not a commissioner. They made it a CEO and they made uh, as a board. 
you had members, uh, part-time members at the CEO. We had uh, a different, uh, we were three of us full-time members. Uh, actually, yeah, um, because the, uh, after 2007, my colleague was also, uh, was sent to retirement also, he was from police and uh, he was appointed with me. He was on the legal side. He was a, a legal man. Um, and then uh, when I left 2011, I didn't expect that I'll be appointed to state council at all. Never, never look forward to be in the state council. I thought now I'm going to retire and focus in my other business. I had a business, I can tell you, but my business not in telecom at all nothing to do with telecom. I was in fashion business and there was a reason why I went into that fashion business. In 1980, I felt I was cut off from my female friends because my world was only male, at work male. I think, I think myself, I was becoming a male, you know, a man, not a woman. So I said, okay, I'll open this fashion business because I was, I had a, ho a hobby from before, from since I was a child to make clothes. And even when I was in university, I used to make my own dresses during summertime. So I said, and there were no good tailors in town. I always had problems with the tailors. So I decided I'll open a tailoring business where I will be meeting women in there. And I will have at least that, uh, return that uh, soft uh, part of a, a, a woman with my other friends and make more friends from female side. That's how it was. It was not uh, just, uh, uh, I didn't believe, you know, to have any business to do related to my work. No, because that is a direct conflict to what you do. Alhamdulillah. Then, of course, then again, I was reappointed in uh, in uh, in uh, in in Maglis uh, Daula, a state council. Now, in 2012, after I was appointed in 2011, 2012, some women came to me and said, "Please come and run for election." elections of a uh, new board of uh, women association. They had problems in the Muscat Women Association. So I said, okay, I agreed last minute. I agreed last minute, actually a week before the election that I will run for those election. But uh, with some other women, I told them, look, I will run, but I'm so busy in the state council, I was in three committees, the only member with three committees. And there was a reason why I joined three committees because members normally join one committee. My situation, I don't know, I was crazy or what. I went and joined three committees. So the whole week I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy up and down to state council. Um, so I ran for that, but I told my friend, I will abdicate after I'm in there and you take over from me. But I, I found them, they abdicated before me. <laughs> then nobody wanted to take over from me, from, uh, from those whom I can trust and they're professionals, not any woman. There were some professionals in that board. Unfortunately, uh, some of them gave up. You know, they could not stand uh, the way, the methods, how they work, because you know it's it's a different culture, completely different culture. It's not uh, a professional culture that you one can uh, work uh, or can operate, especially professional women. Uh, very difficult for them to operate in that environment because you have more housewives, you have different uh, backgrounds in there. Um, then what else I can say? Yeah, why did I join the three committees? If you look at it, I would join economics. That is where my area is. 
because regulatory is economics, legal, technical, three of them. So there they had economics uh, committee. So I, I joined economic committee. Plus I said, look, I've been too, too long away from the community. So I want to come closer to issues within our communities, social. So I joined social committee too. Then a colleague there came to me and said, we want you in a legal committee. The legal committee, they never had women in it. So I agreed, I said, okay, I will come. Yeah, you know, because, you know, they, I think I had a feeling that they trusted me, you know, to, to invite me to join them. So I joined them. So really I was busy for three committees, full time, uh, a lot of work. People, they think that state council they don't do, but we do a lot of work, a lot of studies are being done and research in order to come with the proposals and or a framework of a new law or amend uh, existing laws. Uh, maybe the work itself, people, they don't see it because it takes a long time, a long process till it comes. It could be that we did that, but then uh, not us that we're going to see the fruits of it. Maybe the, the next uh, assemblies, or not assemblies, next Daura, okay, they will uh, see it or maybe can take eight years, can take 12 years to really see it coming. It's, it's a longer process. So then the second uh, part, uh, the second, uh, the second uh, appointing, uh, being, being appointed, some told me, why don't you run for the office, for the Bureau of the, of the State Council? Uh, you will be at least more rest, you will take a more rest than being in the three committees. So I ran for the election because there's election in it. I ran for the election as a member of the bureau and I got it. I became a, a member of the bureau and that was my last, uh, 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 you can say position within the state council. Alhamdulillah, we delivered what we could deliver. Thank you but so you can much. see how much you change, huh? you change in your, in, in your profession. You always gain and change and branching out, putting them together. But the initial training is there. You know, the initial training I had in the engineering is analysis. A lot of thinking of analysis, not, not memorizing, analyze issues. So that helped on it a lot. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for sharing. I know it was very brief compared to the, the grandeur of all your experiences. So we really want to thank you for being able to share and sum it up in, in such a short time. I want to open the floor for questions. Unfortunately, we said we'd have 15 minutes, but because of time, it will just be 10 minutes. And I see Ahmed is eager to ask a question. So go ahead, Ahmed. Should I speak in English? My English is not that fluent, but uh, I rather express what I would like to say in Arabic. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. For me, it's okay. Yeah. أولا شكرا جزيلا أستاذ ناشئة أود أن أشير إن على الصغار أن ينصتوا ويسمعوا هذا الكلام الجميل من مرأة عمانية نفتخر بعطائها وجهودها وتأسيسها للاتصالات في عمان وأعتقد على الفتية والفتيات أن ينصتوا ويستمعوا للمراحل اللي غطتها أستاذة ناشئة لم تكن سهلة كانت مطبات للحياة بدءا من زنجبار ثم رحيلها إلى مصر ثم تكملة دراستها حقيقة أنا أقول أنا أطلع هذه العمامة تحية وإجلان لك يعني شكرا أنا أعطائك يعني بأمانة هذا فخر واعتزاز شكرا ما أود الإشارة أستاذ ناسيا 
ناشئه انا التمس منكم ان تؤلفوا كتابا تحكي حياتكم في مجال الاتصالات بحيث انه يكون ركنا علميا ومعرفيا للصغار هذه التجارب الخصبه اللي عشتيها يجب ان تدرس في الجامعه ومن المفيد اذا كان هذا الارسال يتوصل الى المسؤولين ان تكوني احد الاساتذه تحاضرين في مجال هندسه الاتصالات في الجامعه لاننا نحن باحوج الامر ان ننهل من معرفتكم في هذا المجال للصغار فعلى ارجو من المسؤولين الكرام ان يسمعوا وان يطلبوك مثل ما كل مره كان يطلبوك في مجلس الدوله و و و و الى الى هناك آه لا زلنا بحاجه الى 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 هذا الثراء من المعرفه فيه لان التجارب هذه الخصمه واعتقد شركه نفط عمان استفادت كثيرا منك وكابل هذا كابل كابل ويرلس كان ات ووز بريتش بس اي ثينك سو ذا ديديكيشن اند ذا بارتيسيبيشن اوف ان عماني ايكون لايك يو هاز اولسو ليفت اب ذير بارت اوف برودكتيفيتي ان عمان let us say it maybe you didn't say it but your contribution they were not accepting any Omani and especially a female at that time but not because easy. of your diligence and uh, they have accepted you it was not an easy job this is what I would like to say to the youngsters as you said read well before you sign don't be afraid uh, they the three parts or four parts which you have shared the first part was your discipline of yourself that was something really helped you and then your desires was a component because every time when you go a place that is a desire of your life it was and to accomplish reaches up to this it was not easy it came from a dedication and the most important part that you have done was devoting yourself for Oman always and that is a really proud word to say shukran jazilan laki wa haqiqatan laysa afna al waqt an ma natkallam anki ustad nashi a'taqad mahma qulna ma nu fi haqqik tra it was not an easy subject as Oman has formed As you said, it was three part technical, legal, and other. And see now how smoothly the other, your successor or your procedure are taking it over because the formula and foundation you have put, it helped them to lift up and continue and develop. So, shukran laki, shukran jazeera, Mustafa. And shukran lakum, shukran lakum. Wajibna, Kian. Yani, ahem shi, an tkun mukhlis li amalak, wa tihibba amalak. وتخلص له نعم. وتعمل the best and yes. don't let any obstacle in front of you without resolving it. I was telling Noor before, if, because I had a colleagues of mine, they were male, they found themselves that, oh, you cannot change. I said, look, if you cannot climb the mountain, make nafaq tahtil mountain to cross to the other side. Yes. That was my, uh, my, yani, yani, It's, it's not easy, but you can do it. You don't have to insist that the route to climb the mountain to get to the other side, okay? Find another solution to get to the other side. That was my principles. And my I, used to tell was, I would like to say I lecture in universities and colleges for my own. Hmm. There is a say I would like always for the youngsters that the certificates only proves you that انت متعلم ولكن it doesn't prove you that uh, انت تعرف بالضبط the culture the lift up and the turbulence of life will really cultures you and then you drive with your knowledge but knowledge without cultural education it will be difficult and this is هذه اللي هي المشكله حاليا للفتيه مثل بنتي نور والاخرين يجب ان يتعلموا من استاذه ناشئه 
ان ليس فقط ان نضع الشهاده كعلامه على ظهرنا لان هي كلها ثيوريتيكال نظريات ولكن عليكم ان تثقفوا انفسكم في امور مثلا المواظبه في العمل، الاخلاص والوفاء وايضا عمل في الشركه هي خدمه للوطن مثل ما هي عملت الاستاذه المكرمه ناشئه مراحلها في العمل كانت تروح من مكان الى مكان الا تخرج وتعطي ما قدمت امام الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم للمسؤول شكرا الاستاذ احمد دائما إذا في أي حد ثاني we have around five minutes if you have a question click on raise hand otherwise I will ask there were some questions in the chat I will ask المكرمة uh, uh, the question in the chat so if anyone wants to speak up um, uh, with their microphone please uh, raise your hand to ask a question otherwise I will move to the chat and see so we have a question in the chat from Sabrina Uh, she says, uh, how were you able to balance work and life with family? Okay, it's not difficult. I had my first baby. I was in my final year university. I had to withdraw in the middle of the year. I had complications in the delivery. So I had to withdraw that year and I was updated to the last minute. In the middle of the year, I couldn't go to the second uh, to the to the second uh, semester because we had two semester first first and second semester. I could not. I had to go home to my parents because I was sick after having the first baby. So I, then I returned back in the year after, and Alhamdulillah, I finished. I had a baby, so I had a baby and a husband also. When people tell me that we cannot balance the two, it's not true. You can. It depends on your interest. I love my children too. I brought up my children too. So you have to, when you go to work, you do your work. You go home, you focus on your children. After all, the children, they are not there all the time. They go to, when they grow up, they go to school. They come back. Ah. I was not a mother who pampers her children. I was very strict with my children. I did not use to help them in their homeworks. I make them sure they do it themselves, their homeworks, like what I was. I was alone. I used even, I, was, I went to Egypt when I was only nine, 10 years old. Even in school certificate where we are getting, you know, every, I sign myself. But I had in mind, I went to Egypt to study, not to play. So I focused myself on the study. I didn't want my parents to get angry with me, you know, because they didn't want me to, go, to send me to Egypt. And I insisted to go to Egypt. When I saw my colleagues in my school, because I was in Arabic speaking school, in the school, and it was first Dufa, you know, the first batch, I was in the first batch of that school. And then suddenly they decided The government decided, it was a British colony at that time, they decided no entrance exams except in English. And we were taking everything in Arabic media, okay? English as a language, as a second language. So to transform the child in class six from Arabic media to English media, a lot of parents sent their children abroad, sent them to Egypt at that time. And I found myself in my class, all oh, my friends are all are going to Egypt. And I insisted that I want also to go to Egypt. My parents didn't want me to go too young, but then uh, they couldn't uh, stop me from my insistence and they sent me there. Now, after that, as I said, uh, my children, maybe they were not troublesome as such. Uh, It depends how you bring up your children. And then the home, let me tell you, Sabrina, don't you have uh, a help at home? For sure you have, or most of you, you have help at home. If you don't trust the maid, you have your mother. You can drop your maid and your child at your mother's place during the, during the uh, day. If especially now, the maids are not like before. The maids are during our time, they were much more uh, uh, careful. 
now also with social media, they are busy with the with the, with the WhatsApp and this, and they can uh, ignore them, the child. Um, we were fine. I mean, uh, I, 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 at the same time, you have to realize when you leave the office, don't take your problems to home. Forget the challenges of the office when you go home. Don't open it up. You need also to focus on your children and your home and not to upset yourself and forget those challenges at uh, work. I had a principle on myself. You can go into arguments with your colleagues a lot at office, but I noticed the man shuts. Once the, the meeting is over, they shut women they had tendency of blaming and thinking and this no 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 just forget about it like any other colleague of yours don't take the trouble and start uh, thinking oh he caused this he did this so that you can do other things i think that's a really great principle and i hope uh, a lot of people are listening and and take that into account we still have a, a few more questions but we we have to go really fast and i want everyone questions to be answered. There's, there's a question about uh, the telecom sector, which I'll, maybe I'll leave in the end, but there's some other questions. Uh, so someone asked, what kept Her Excellency going? So what kept you going through all the obstacles and challenges throughout your year? I think that's an excellent question. I love my job. <laughs> I love the subject what I was, I was doing. And I love to learn more and more. All the time I'm learning new things. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, that is it. You know, it's, you have to love what you are doing. If you don't love what you are doing, you'll never be successful. Because you'll be doing something. This is very important, even for those who are studying in their bachelors. Before you decide, do not just imitate. See yourself what you will enjoy. I felt I will enjoy, I will enjoy engineering because I love mathematics, I love physics. Okay, so the same, the same thing. When you start working, you love what you are doing. If you don't love, you will not be successful. You will get old very quickly. You will get tired. You will want to give up in everything. Uh, we have a question from Azan al-Subhi. Uh, he says, what are the most important skills that you recommend for young people? Think, analyze, think whatever around you in the environment. You have to have a dream. You have to have imagination, okay? Without that, don't think of books only. The books, they will give you theories. They will give you a knowledge, but that, that knowledge you have to think how to implement it. Look around you. How can you do that? How can you relate that to the to the environment you are living around with? That's how I look at it in that way. And uh, our last technical question is um, uh, how will artificial intelligence cause the loss of jobs? And if we're talking about divergence, how do you see the future of the postal sector and possible divergence with ICT with the increase in e-commerce? It's a very low- uh, You're talking about postal? There's postal? two questions. So question about artificial intelligence and will it cause- no, uh, That I understand, yeah. but you're saying, you talk about, you said in postal services? Yes, so it says- Ah, uh, okay, I will come to it because I was looking into the restructure of postal services before. Yeah. I was heading that also when I was in the ministry. I was heading the uh, ministry uh, executive committee for restructure of okay. uh, postal uh, sector. Unfortunately, I'm not a post person, but I, you see, I'm a telecom, but then I was given that responsibility too. Yeah. Uh, it was not functioning well. And then they said, okay, give it to Nasha. Nasha, she will uh, drive it. Look, postal is not only letters, letters we knew from that time, 
letters will disappear. You have other medias, you have internet, you have email. So the, as, a, as, a, as a post, it's like a telegram. We used to have telegram before also. These are all services that they disappear. They're replaced with technology with other services. But there is something in postal which is very important. Packages. Who will deliver the package? That's a physical, right? So the physical packages need to be transported. And that is the job of the poster, is the packages. Packages, the, and uh, we can see today what uh, uh, poster is doing. It's more of uh, trans, uh, transporting the actual physical packages. Yes, they are in competition with others, but uh, uh, they have certain, uh, uh, certain uh, uh, what you call, uh, certain uh, packages, nobody else can transfer, can transport them except the postage. It depends on the, uh, on the weight of it, okay? But of course, they're in competition with uh, all courier services, okay? And, uh, but they are, they will be there. You cannot, uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot say that they will disappear. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time, for your inspiration. And a lot of people in the chat have said that they feel inspired to start the next week uh, because of the energy and because of your amazing, incredible story. Before we end, I want to thank our local sponsors, uh, which are UMC Production and the Ministry of um, uh, Sports, uh, Culture and Youth. Uh, and if you would like to know more about us, you are now registered as a Creative Mornings member. Please keep in touch through Instagram, through Twitter. Give us your thoughts. Give us what were the most uh, standout moments of today. Just reach out to us and we'll be in touch soon about next month's session. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely rest of the weekend and have a lovely week ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, again. Um, we, you do not understand how appreciative we are of uh, what you had to offer today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And goodbye, everyone. Masaram. Goodbye. Thank you being with you, young people. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Masaram.